Now that we've designed one card and its associated card view, the next step is to build a stack of those cards to represent the things our user is trying to learn. This stack will change as the app is used because the user will be able to remove cards. So we have to mark it with at state. Right now we don't have any way of adding cards. So we're going to add a stack of 10 using our example card. Swift's arrays have a helpful initializer in it repeating count, which takes one value and repeats it a number of times to create the array. In our case, we can use that with our example card to create a simple test array. So start by adding this property to content view. At state, private var, cards equals an array of card, repeating card.example, count 10. Our main content view is going to contain a number of overlapping elements inside stacks. But for now, we're just going to put in a rough skeleton. First, our stack of cards will be placed inside a Z stack, so we can make them partially overlap with a neat 3D effect. Second, around that Z stack will be a V stack. Right now that V stack won't do much, but later on it'll allow us to place a timer above our cards. And third, around that V stack will be another Z stack, so we can place our cards and timer on top of a background. Right now these stacks probably feel like overkill, but it'll make more sense as we progress. The only complex part of our next code is how we position the cards inside the card stack so they have slight overlapping. I've said it before, but the best way to write Swift UI code is to carve off any messy calculations so they're handled as methods or modifiers. In this case, we're going to create a new stacked modifier that takes a position in an array, along with the total size of the array, and offsets a view by some amount based on those values. This will allow us to create an attractive card stack where each card is a little further down the screen than the one before it. Add this extension to contentView.swift outside of the content view struct. Extension view, func, stacked at, position, int, in total, int, returns some view. Let offset equals cg float, total minus position. Then return self.offset, cg size, width zero, height, offset times 10. As you can see, that pushes views down by 10 points for each place they are in the array. Zero, then 10, 20, 30, and so on. With that simple modifier, we can now build a really nice card stack effect using the layout I described earlier. So replace your current body property and content view with this. Z stack, then a V stack, then another Z stack. And now for each, zero, so cards.count, ID, dot self, index in. Then we'll make a card view, with a card being self.cards index, and use our new stacked modifier, at that index, in self.cards.count. When you run that back, you'll see what I mean about the shadows building up as the card depth increases. Now it looks quite stark against the white background, but if we had a background picture, you'll see it looks better. In the GitHub files to this project, you'll see background at 2x.jpg and background at 3x.jpg. Please drag those both into your asset catalog so we can use them. Now add this image view into content view, just inside the initial Z stack. Image, background, dot resizable, dot scale to fill, dot edges ignoring safe area, dot all. Adding a background image is only a small change, but I think it really makes the whole app look better.